Welcome to our basic web design class. This is the first video tutorial for project one, so it's probably the first video that you're watching so far with this. I am on the class website at the moment, and you'll notice that I have gone to projects into project one right here, so I'm on the project one page. And to get started on this project, the first thing we really need to do is we need to sign up for a hosting account. If you scroll on down, you see right down here we've got sign up for a hosting account. I'm going to scroll down a little further and we've got general instructions down here. It gives you a little more detail. The hosting account, as we talked about in class, that's where all of our files are stored out on the internet. So that when someone goes to view a website, they type in the web address or the URL and it takes them to a computer that has all of our, our website files on it. So we need a hosting account to work with in this class. It's the place that we're going to store all the projects and the labs that we work on. And frankly, it's the location I'm going to go to check your work. So this is critical to your getting grades. Um, it's how you turn your work in. You're not going to uh, email them to me or turn them in during class or anything like that. You're going to upload them to this location. So we need to get this account set up right now. So looking under general instructions, you see that we get a web hosting account. Now this varies as if, to, if you're at Butte College or Chico State. Uh, this video is for those of you at Butte College because we're going to sign up for an Alter Vista hosting account. Chico State has their own service available here. So if you are ready to sign up and you're on the Project One page, the easiest thing is just to go to the sign up link right here and click on it. And it's going to take you to the sign up page at Alter Vista. I do want to point out you can always type the web address if you're not on that page. Uh, they are altervista.org, but note that it says en.altervista.org for English. This company actually, uh, Italian is their primary language. So if you go to just altervista.org, you're going to get a web page in Italian. So en.altervista.org is where we want to go to sign up. So pretty easy process here. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through it. First, we need to decide what web address we want to use. So you see we've got the nice big sign up location right here. Everything that they use uh, uses www. Dot, and then you get to give them a name dot altervista.org. So this is a subdomain right here. So you can pick something. Um, the one that I'm going to use in class is msp5.altervista.org, but I've already signed up for that one, so I'm going to sign up for an alternate one right now. You can use your student ID name, which would be the same as your email address. You can use your first name. You can use Bobby MSP5 or whatever you want to use. It really doesn't matter what you're going to use there. I'm going to go with my username, uh, hazemi.altervista.org, and it has told me the address is available, so that's good. It's also kind of nice that they let you know right here before you get further along in the sign-up process. So... Put that information in there and hit the sign up button. And we get on to our next page. So, again, I have my address here. It's still standing, it's okay. That's good. And I just have to give them some personal information. So, put my name in here, my gender, my birth year. Uh, I tried this earlier and they actually do require you to put a birth year in here. I guess you don't have to be honest what it is. Okay, country, you do want to change this over to United States. Right, there we go. Because as I looked in the control panel earlier, it does affect where you're able to upload from. So I'm going to change it to United States and go ahead and tell them California and give them my zip code. There we go and my email address. So give them your email address. This is actually an alternate email address that I have at Butte because I've already used my standard one. I believe that'll work. And then we reach this point that they want us to 
copy the security code is, is how they're stating it. So this is just a way to try and cut down on spam on the internet uh, so that robots can't be out there creating uh, accounts. So you have to decipher what that says. So go ahead and figure out what your letters and numbers are there and type that in. If it's not clear enough for you to read, there's a little refresh code link right here. So you can click on that, it'll give you a fresh code. Okay, I think I've got that one right. So I have to go agree to their terms of service. I think I mentioned at the beginning, this is a free account that we're signing up for. So that is good. So I've got everything filled in. I'm going to go ahead and click on the sign up button. Okay, they told me that they have sent an email to the address, to my address, and that to activate my site, I need to follow the link in that email address, or in that email message. So I do have my email sitting open over here, and look at that, it just came in a moment ago. So I'm gonna click on that one. It may, sometimes emails aren't instantaneous, uh, so you might have to wait a few minutes to get this. So, hello, please activate. I've got a link, and uh, they do have, see, after activation, I'm gonna receive a second email with a link to the new site and the login details. They have confirmed my username here and my password, which is random. Random makes it hard to remember, but also makes it secure. I'll show you in a moment where you can go change that password. So first, I'm going to click on that link And there we go, they are creating my site for me. And I get to wait. There we go, move it again. Almost there, okay. So we've reached this point, they have they want me to keep in touch with them, basically they want me to use the social media. So I could like them on Facebook, I could give them a plus one on Google Plus, I could add them to Twitter. I actually don't want any of these. In fact, I think I've already done it with another account, so I definitely don't want it. If you want to get updates through any of these services, then go ahead and click on those at this point. So I'm now going to hit the continue button, and I am logged in. So I heard another email come in. I'm going to go check. Okay, here's my welcome to AltaVista email. I'm going to click on that one. So again, I've got my login credentials. I've got my password right there. Boy, that's a fun one to remember. And they've given me FTP info, which is what I really need right here. And just a little bit of general information. Okay, so here are my login credentials. There's my username, I knew that. There's my password. I'm going to do a command C and copy that. And then I'm gonna go back over to the tab that I have AltaVista open in. Okay, so I'm logged in already. I'm gonna go over and click on Go to File Management. To be honest, their control panel here is a little unusual. Uh, it's not it's not cPanel, which is one of the standard ones out there. I'm not sure which one this is based on. But I'm gonna click on Go to File Management because I discovered when I did that, they gave me more menus. So this is helpful. That's what they call their dashboard, that last screen we were on right there. I instead want to come up here to my username, and you notice when I hover over that, they give me some more options, and I'm going to click on Profile. Okay, here's the information that I filled out before. You could give them your city and your address if you want. I'm not going to bother. What I want to do is I want to scroll on down and here I can change my password. So that's why over here I selected and copied my password. So I have it on the clipboard right now. So I can click under old password and I can paste. And now I can click under new password and then confirm the password and I can give them a new password. So I'm going to type something I can more easily remember. Oops, let's get that right. And let's make sure I get it the same. And 
I'm going to say change password. Oops, I'm not going to do that. So that's a little uh, program that I'm running on my computer called One Password, which saves passwords. It gives me one secure location to save all my passwords in. Helpful little utility. Okay, so now you see my password was successfully modified. So I've now changed my password. So now it's something that I can more easily remember. So that's about all I need to do while I'm in logged in here. Uh, at this point, you can go ahead and log out. There we go, I'm logged out. You don't want to leave this logged in, especially if you're sitting on a computer in the lab, because if you do, other people have access to your information. I'm going to flip back over to my email. So this was that last email they sent me. It has my login credentials. So there's my username. My password I've just changed, so I know I have a new one there. And the rest of this is information that I'm going to need when we go set up uh, Dreamweaver so that we can access it. So it's FTP access information. FTP is file transfer protocol. That's how we're going to move files up into that area. So we'll need the server name, the username. This is not my password. I know what it is. And then passive mode, we need to know that that's what we're going to use. Okay, so that is everything in this step right now. So we have just done this get a hosting account for Butte College. So the next step you're going to do is you're going to click on this link right here where you add your name to the course list of student websites. So I need you to go click on that and type the new web address you've just created into that form along with your name and hit submit. That'll send it to me and when you do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to come add you to this list of student websites over here once you send that to me. Okay so that is everything for this tutorial and uh, hopefully that was pretty easy for you to follow along.